My name is Corey Conley. I'm a product manager at Skyjack, and I'm here to introduce our new, uh, newest addition to our boom lineup. This is a SJ86T. We actually have another model, SJ82T. It's a no jib machine. So I'll give a kind of a quick overview of some of the key specs before I go over some of the features of the machine. It's, a, as the name would suggest, an 86 foot platform height machine, uh, working height obviously of 92 feet, horizontal reach of 76 feet 10 inches. Um, it's 500 pounds capacity unrestricted and does have a restricted capacity of 750 pounds, so it is dual capacity. Uh, the no-jib SJ82T is 1,000 pounds and 500 pounds. Great ability of uh, 45%, uh, travel speed of three miles per hour. So what I'm gonna do is I'll uh, start with uh, basically the base and work my way up. So within the chassis of the machine, you'll notice that similar to our uh, other Skyjack booms, it is an axle-based drive machine. We use axles for a reason. We think they're reliable and we think they deliver the best performance. So we're using similar axles you'll find on our other machines as well as other, other wheel loaders and telehandlers. So let, like those machines that you rarely see get stuck, you rarely see a Skyjack boom get stuck and that's why we stick with the axles. So we've got a limited slip uh, differential on the front axle, the steering axle, and then on the rear we actually have an operator controlled uh, locking differential, similar to the, the axles we use on our articulating booms. And this is actually a feature that we will be introducing onto our other stick booms in the, in the coming months. So another part of our drive system is the easy drive which is common to our other booms. So what that is referring to is the directional sensing drive and steer. So that, that's a feature that is unique to Skyjack. So regardless of the uh, position of the boom, the machine will always drive with, uh, this, within the same, with respect to the same direction of the orientation of the boom. So if you're positioned at one end, you drive forward and then rotate to the other end, drive forward, forward is always going to be forward. You don't have to worry about any color-coded uh, arrows or any switches that uh, the operator has to initiate. Moving up, uh, look at the cowlings first. So we use similar to uh, our other booms, we use a fiberglass cowling. Um, it is fairly rigid. It's also easily, um, easy to repair or if need be replaced, so it does have an external frame. Um, the color, the fiberglass material uh, does have a gel coat, so the pigment is actually in the material. So what, what that means is if there's scratches, any kind of surface damage, it's not gonna be as visible. Uh, the, front, the front cowling is fixed, so you notice behind the cowling, you will see the two dual batteries as well as the swing drive. So because the batteries and the swing, the, and the swing drive aren't easy, as easily accessible because you can't remove it or lift the cowling, we do have in front of the engine, we do have the battery disconnect and uh, the jumper terminal if you, if you have a dead battery. And then for the swing drive itself, there's actually the backlash adjustment on the bottom. So it is protected from by the cowling, but it is still easily accessible underneath it. The engine on this machine is the Deutz TD 2.9, so that's their 74 horsepower turbo diesel engine. Uh, we also have available as an export engine the previous tiered uh, D2 2011 uh, four-cylinder engine. So in some of those countries that uh, don't have the ultra-low sulfur fuel available, they can, they can use that engine. So this engine, for those that aren't familiar with it, it does uh, it does have after treatment on it, it is tier 4 compliant, but it just has a diesel oxidation catalyst. So basically maintenance free, it doesn't have a, a DPF or SCR. The engine is mounted on a swing out engine tray, so there's a removable bolt and it is on a gas strut that you can swing it out. Most of the service components are on the outboard side, so you've got the oil filter, the oil fill, the dipstick, that stuff's all easily accessible, the air filter. If you do need to get to the other side, like I said, the engine tray does swing out. Before I go over the other side of the, the machine, I'll point out that we do have two tire options available. Standard tire is a grip lug foam filled tire, and we do have an optional non-marking tire available as well. Another thing with the cowlings is we do have these drop down latches, so they are clearly visible. If the, the cowling is not secured properly, you will see them hanging down. On the hydraulic side of the turret, 
You've got on the far right, you've got under this fixed cowling, you've got the polymer fuel tank. So it is 45 gallons. It's the exact same tank that we use on our 61 and 66 T. Beside that, you've got the emergency uh, lowering pump and motor. In front of that, you've got the main hydraulic manifold. And you notice all the valves are clearly labeled. So when referencing the manual, everything's clearly identifiable. Beside that, you've got the, the brake manifold. Underneath that, you've got the main uh, swing gear. That's a remote grease fitting. So the reason we've got it in this location is it's right beside the base controls. So it, it is something that needs to be uh, taken care of. One person can do that on their own. You don't need two people. So by having it in this location and having it accessible for one person to do it, it's more likely to, to be taken care of. Beside the brake manifold, you've got the steel hydraulic tank. This is the exact same tank that we use on our 61 and 6060. Steel obviously is very durable, but it also helps dissipate heat a bit better as well. On top of the, the hydraulic tank, you'll notice we do have an optional 3.5 kilowatt generator, as well as a hydraulic oil cooler. So we actually have three separate options that call out generator. We've got this three and a half kilowatt generator option, as well as a 12 kilowatt generator option as a welder ready option. And we have a 12 kilowatt generator option that actually comes with the welder itself. In front of the hydraulic tank, we have the main or the base control box. So you notice the layout is fairly similar to our other booms. And as I noted before, we do have dual capacity on this machine, so we actually have this section here is unique to, to these machines, so I'll go over that a bit more on the uh, platform controls. Within the base control box, you'll find something that is very common to all of our other Skyjack aerial equipment. The sky-coated feature is referring to basically the heart of every Skyjack uh, piece of aerial equipment. You've got the relay base color-coded and numbered wiring scheme. So anybody who's familiar with our other aerial equipment will know that we just use standard common off-the-shelf uh, relays that can be bought uh, at, an auto, at any auto shop. Um, and those familiar with troubleshooting or other aerial equipment will recognize that we use the same color-coded numbered wiring scheme um, for all equipment that have common functions. So on a sigil lift, that black 14 is going to be up. That orange 14, 13 is going to be down. It's the same on this boom as well. Next, I'll go over the actual boom section. You'll notice something that is a bit different on this boom from our uh, other booms, our other telescopic booms, rather is uh, it does have a short riser section. So what this, this linkage does is as the boom elevates, it actually pulls, pulls that rear pivot point forward. So you have it uh, moving forward over the, the chassis center of gravity. So what, what that does is it maximizes the main platform height while also um, minimizing the amount of weight to, to keep the machine stable as well it keeps the, the dimensions fairly compact when you have it in a stowed position. Um, another key feature when referring to the base pivot point is if you notice that the, the rear point of the base, um, you do have a removable panel and you can easily access the, uh, the main cylinder and, and remove it with very, very few obstacles in the way. So from a, from a service standpoint, that is a key feature. So right here, looking at the E-chain, you'll notice it's very similar to, uh, to our other booms. It does have a two-piece cover on the top and the track is two-piece. That's just due to its size and from a handling standpoint. But the links themselves are very, com very similar to, the, to our other uh, booms and the, the polymer links we use on them. So those links are they have the ability to be individually replaced. And this material holds up quite well. It's durable and it's not going to wear wear out. Our boom section is a three-piece boom section. One of the things you'll notice that we do have cutouts on our fly boom. Um, one of the advantages of this is obviously we can the weight we take out of the fly boom, we also take out of the counterweight. But one of the other things we did was we made sure that we could align up the holes so that you can actually remove the pins on the extension cylinder and you can actually inspect the boom cables. So you know, you'll notice too that there are some, uh, some drilled holes around these cutouts. We do have a hazardous environment kit available. And as part of that kit, there are aluminum uh, covers for the fly boom. On this machine, you'll notice it does have a three bar jib similar to our other booms. It's five and a half feet long. 
Um, you've got the inverted uh, cylinder. You've got the, the manifold underneath the cylinder. So you notice all the cables and the manifold are all protected within the structure. So they're not gonna be susceptible to any damage from debris or from, from getting crushed. The platform rotator itself is a bolt-on platform rotator. It's non-proprietary, so it's standard off the shelf. Platform, you'll notice, is very similar to the ones used on our other booms. Uh, standard basket is eight feet. We do have an optional six foot basket as well. So the rails themselves are common to our other booms. The only difference on the base of the platform is added uh, reinforcements for the higher capacity. So you notice they are bolt in, they're individual sections. So we do know that these rails do take a lot of, they do take a lot of abuse and they do get damaged. So by having these individual bolt in sections, easy to replace in the field, which means less downtime. So you notice uh, this does come with the standard entrance. It's a three entry uh, drop bar. We do have an optional gate available as well. Um, you notice at the front we also have our additional uh, or an optional platform work light. So this is a new option we're introducing on this machine. So they are uh, hardwired in 12, 12 volt uh, LED lights. Um, I guess on that note, I could mention some of our other options on this machine. Um, I did note some of the other ones like the uh, the generator options. We also have uh, airline to platform as an option. We have a flashing light at the base as an option. For some of those applications, well, they may be uh, mining or uh, applications that could have the machine exposed to uh, additional gases. We do have a uh, positive air shutoff valve available. Uh, we have two weather packages available as well. We've got the cold weather start kit and the Arctic package. Looking at the controls, it's the same aluminum control box that we use in our other booms. Um, you'll notice the layout is very similar as well. You've got the multi-axis uh, joystick for boom and turret, boom, raise and lower and turret rotate. Then you've got the joystick on the right for steer and drive. You'll notice the platform controls in one area, boom, extend, retract and jib in another. And then you've got the speed, uh, the function speed selector switch as well. And as I noted when we're looking at the base control pa panel, Right here, this is the, uh, the controls for the dual capacity. So the way our dual capacity feature works is when the operator turns the machine on, the default is the restricted higher capacity. He can, at that point, select the unrestricted lower capacity, the 500 pounds, but if he does not, if he extends out or lowers into that restricted area, what's gonna happen is this amber light is gonna turn on. And what that amber light means is that he has to manually select that switch and acknowledge that he's going into that unrestricted area and acknowledging that he has 500 pounds or less in the capacity. As part of that dual capacity, when they're in that restricted higher capacity zone, it's no longer two, it's no longer rated for just two people. The platform is rated for three, three personnel. So we do have the standard lanyard attachment points on both sides of the platform, as well as these D rings for the added personnel. In summary, I just want to highlight that uh, this is a Skyjack machine, so a lot of those key design features that you're used to on our other machines, they are carried over onto this machine. It is an axle-based drive machine. It does have that easy drive feature for that direction sensing, drive and steer controls. It does feature the Sky-coded, the relay-based control system that you find on all of your other Skyjack AWP equipment. If you need any more information, please visit www.skyjack.com.